Hello, and welcome to this video on the difference between a pot and reflux still for alcohol production. Perhaps the simplest distinction is that a pot still creates an alcohol with flavour, whereas a reflux still strips everything except the alcohol and a small amount of water. Although important, this does not cover the whole of how and why the two are different. Distilling has five fundamental steps. Fermentation, heating to vaporization, vapour collection, cooling, and collecting of the alcohol. A pot still, to simplify the process, takes the wash for a whiskey or wine, it heats this in the pot. The vapours from this contain alcohol, and they rise up to the head, which is a cap on the top of the pot, and this directs the steam, which is the vapour, into a tube called the arm. From the arm, the vapours travel to a coil. This coil is also known as a worm, due to its shape. This is immersed in a tub of cold water or some other similarly cool environment. This chills and condenses vapour back into liquid, and in this case, it is primarily made of alcohol. This is then removed through a spout attached to the end of the worm, which may or may not have a spigot attached to it to restrict flow. Pot stills are used for single malt scotch, mescal, rum, or anything that has a flavour to it particularly. A column still does not work this way. A column still works by heating the environment around the particular wash you're using. This wash then enters the column, and it rises as vapour, where it interacts with the cooling jacket around the column, and with the packing within. This causes the vapour to condense and begin dropping back down the column. Gradually, the amount of vapour rising, and the amount of condensed vapour dropping, will reach an equilibrium, and then an unequal point, where vapour once again begins to rise. This will cause a separation. The amount of separation occurs is dependent upon the amount of packing, and the amount of packing then has an effect on how much flavour reaches the end of this column. In most cases, a column still will only allow ethanol through, stripping any and all of the flavours that are involved. This packing is also known as plates. These plates are material that separates the still into individual chambers. The use of a rather porous packing material creates a variety of chambers of size and volume, and that this then creates a large number of them. These act as miniature versions of a still, and as the mixture of ethanol and steam rises into each new chamber, it undergoes a continuous stage of distillation and separation, and each time it rises to a new chamber, it has to contain this new higher concentration of alcohol and repeat the process. Once it reaches the top of the still, it is often then drawn off as a liquid. When it comes to vodka, rum, and gin, these are clear spirits, the column still works very well. John O'Floor managed to get at least this much right when he described Smirnoff vodka. The only labels on food more meaningless than those are the ones on Smirnoff bottles that say triple distills vodka. <laughs> oh, really, Smirnoff? So you ran the potato sweats through the tube sock two extra times. <laughs> Thanks for spending the effort. <laughs> The big difference here between the column still and the pot still is a lack of baffles, barriers and impediments in a pot still. This is distinct from the column still, which has a single column packed with as much as it possibly can to create as many chambers as possible. This has been described previously. To give some examples, Japan uses a process where scotch blends may use stock sourced from many different distilleries, and Japan also uses different protocols. There, companies can produce their own blends by housing numerous whiskey stills of assorted shape sizes and features, different yeast strains, and fermentation lengths. This along with assorted barrels is capable of creating many, many different types of malt whiskies. Other larger producers follow processes where the first distillation can be performed in a column still and then transferred to a boiler, which basically creates a continuous pot still for a second distillation run. Other large companies have massive column stills at their disposal. The main column still at Wild Turkey is roughly 16 metres tall and has 19 stripping plates. Fundamentally, a pot still operates as follows. During the first distillation, the pot still, or otherwise known as a wash still, is filled with fermented liquid. This has an alcohol content of between 7 and 12%. In the case of whiskey, the liquid used can be a beer, while in the case of brandy it is normally a wine. It is then heated until the point at which the liquid begins to boil. Depending upon the concentrations and other factors, this is normally somewhere around the 78 degree centigrade mark. 
the liquid being distilled is a mixture of water and alcohol, along with other byproducts and congeners. As alcohol has a lower boiling point, it is both more volatile and evaporates at a higher rate. This creates a concentration of alcohol in the vapour above the liquid, and this is higher than the liquid itself. During distillation, this travels up a swan neck at the top of the pot and down the line arm, after which it travels through the condenser. This normally creates a higher concentration of alcohol than the original liquid, and this distillate is called low wines, having a concentration of between 25 and 35 percent alcohol by volume. Common practice is to take these low wines and further distill them a second time in a pot still. This yields a distillate with even higher concentrations of alcohol, and in the case of many Irish whiskies, this is further distilled a third time. However, things like cognac and most single malt whiskies are only distilled twice. This has several reasons, one of which is to preserve flavour. During distillation, the initial and final portions of spirit, which condense, are termed the heads and tails. These may be captured, and then separately, they can form the centre or heart of a new distillate through being added to yet another distillation process. This is because these portions of the distillate may contain high concentrations of undesirable elements, but they'll also contain significant quantities of desirable elements. This creates a fundamentally different product, and that can be seen here. Where the column still separates everything over a relatively short space, in a tight environment, it produces a more pure ethanol product. The pot still does not do this. It, to oversimplify, dumps the entire ethanol content in a short period of time. As a consequence, there is a different profile of other compounds which evaporate and distill over the same time frame. This produces a very different product over time, with peculiar traits. The exact product and why will be covered in the future. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.